Welcome to Eating Enlightenment. Today, I'll be laying down some reasons why you are a food addict. I asked my email list a question on an anonymous survey. I asked, what's your biggest problem around food? What's your biggest question? I got a few replies that said, hey, our biggest question is why am I a food addict? Why, why is like food so difficult for me? Why am I this way? And here's my response. I'm going to draw upon both a little bit of spirituality and a little bit of science and hopefully tie this all together in, in the brain as well, neuroscience. So if you do want to submit an anonymous question for me, you can click that link down below. There's also another link as well down below that leads to a blog article where I cover all these points in more depth. And then lastly, leave a thumbs up or subscribe if you just want to hear my lovely voice more. Okay, let's go into these points. Um, for starters, most people don't know they have a problem with food. They just are that way. I remember in wrestling, I didn't even think about binge eating. It wasn't even on the back of my mind that I had a problem with food. Sure, I had problems with weight. I had problems with um, self-esteem. I had problems with, uh, f with like controlling myself, but I actually didn't see it as, I thought it was a willpower thing. I was like, why can't I just focus? Like, uh, and I thought it was my fault. And the, if there's, I'm going to condense this video very short into one word right now. It's not your fault. No one phrase. It's not your fault. Now let's get into some reasons why it's actually not your fault. Okay, this is so, so important. If you want to stop being a food addict, you have to understand that your brain and your conditioning have led your, your brain, uh, the reptile part of your brain, the amygdala part of your brain to crave things. And this amygdala is more powerful than your conscious mind. Your amygdala is getting triggered and it's forcing you, it's controlling you to eat food out of control. This is so, so important to get. I'll try to explain more about the amygdala and stuff, but just right now, just realize that the Buddha said that craving is the root of all evil. Craving is the root of all evil. It's not what Pink Floyd said. In the article down below, I talk a little bit about Pink Floyd, how Pink Floyd said, Money is the root of all evil. That was a song, and um, it was a lyric in a song. And it's just not true. Money is not the root of all evil. Food is not the root of all evil. It's craving. And craving originates in your amygdala. Your amygdala is this beautiful little almond-shaped piece in your brain, and it keeps you alive. It makes you breathe automatically. It makes your heart beat automatically. Try holding your breath for as long as you can until you pass out. You won't be able to do it because your amygdala will force you to breathe. And so what's happening with food addiction, with uh, binge eating, is that your amygdala has learned certain behavior patterns. And we'll go into why the amygdala learned these patterns, but just the amygdala has learned these patterns and it overtakes your mind. So. This helps explain why you lose control, why you are a food addict. It helps explain that confusion. There's a part of your brain that is like hijacking you, literally hijacking you. And it is making you do things that you are not consciously doing. That's why you, that's, that's why. Okay. So then, then another question comes up and it's a good question. Why does my amygdala, um, behave in such a way like why me why my amygdala why aren't why isn't my friend's amygdala you know malfunctioning great question the short and simple answer is that dieting plus a whole bunch of other reasons equals food addiction okay dieting plus whole bunch of other reasons. These could be childhood. It could be accidental dieting. I talk about that in the article down below, accidental dieting, because oftentimes people will start binge eating before they officially dieted. Um, oftentimes we get 
uh, social pressure. You know, if you're in gymnastics or if you're in wrestling or if you're, I mean, of course, modeling. But if there's social pressure for you to look a certain way, that can trigger restriction. Um, some form of restriction, dieting plus some accidental form of restriction, social pressure, dieting and some form of social restriction, and plus your genes. There's nothing you can do about your genes. Um, oftentimes people who are struggling with food, they have a gene that is more alert to their surroundings, which is great. It would have helped to keep you alive back in the caveman days, okay? It would have helped keep you alive, but but now that that gene is great, but it it, you know, you see food, the, the smells are, are more in your face. When you go out, it's just more apparent. You're more tuned into the stimulus of food. And so, you know, you know your genes play a role too. There's studies that show that um, binge eating basically runs in the family. Or that, you know, if your sister, if your twin sister had a binge eating problem, that you're like 40% more likely to as well. So it runs in the family, there's some. But... Genes only explain about, they're not the whole picture. A bigger picture is understanding, did you get food deprived when you were a kid? Were you not fed regularly as a kid? Maybe your parents went out for a long time and left you alone with food. Maybe there wasn't food regularly being served. Maybe like your family's pattern was to starve during the day and eat a lot during the night. Maybe food was scarce. There's a bunch of different reasons, but it's some form of restriction, whether that's from an accidental childhood where your parents didn't feed you, they neglected you, whatever, plus dieting. Dieting oftentimes um, uh, fuels. It makes things even worse. Um, and, and now, hopefully this gives you a background about why your amygdala um, there's one key piece that I have forgotten to tell you though. Dieting and all this restriction, what it does is it threatens your survival. That's the key piece right here. That's the, that's the key piece. That's the key piece. Dieting and all this restriction and losing weight and not eating, it threatens your amygdala. Remember, your amygdala is this thing that keeps you alive. It makes your brain do automatic things to keep you alive. So dieting and all this restriction it tricks your brain or if you know your brain is trying to keep you alive starvation was the number one killer of humans thousands of years ago people starved to death so the brain has evolved ways to protect you from starvation so with all this dieting your brain would then tell you to automatically eat food <laughs> wolf it down stay alive and two things that happen from a neuroscientific standpoint First, your brain um, released all these chemicals, all these happy chemicals around food and eating a lot of food, a lot of sugary food oftentimes. It released all these happy chemicals and you learned, perhaps at a young age, to associate all these good feelings that food was keeping you alive. Food was keeping you alive. All these happy chemicals, and you repeat that. Maybe, maybe it didn't start off with very much in the beginning. Maybe it was just you overate a little bit, but then you'd try harder the next time. You know that to to not eat, to lose weight, and then you binge again. And I'm sure you see this cycle where you binge more calories than you restrict. You end up gaining weight by restricting. So it fuels a, a worse and worse cycle, where Part of your, your, your split, There's a, there begins to be a split in you. Part of you wants to lose weight. You restrict. You try harder and harder. Then that part of you, it triggers the amygdala. The amygdala says, oh my God, I'm dying. Eat. Commands you to eat. You lose control. You eat way more calories than you had lost. You end up gaining weight and you try again. And the brain is then reinforcing this cycle. The, the positive chemicals are being released. Oh, it's being released in here. I feel great about losing weight, or I feel great about surviving and binge eating. 
you know, this is subconsciously what's happening in the brain. You're training your brain when you diet and restrict to binge. Um, and if this has happened a lot, then you're going to be a food addict. You're going to struggle around food. It's a cycle. The key thing is if you're beginning this process of healing, normalizing food, um, building your self-esteem up, the key thing right now is just to see this cycle. See that when you lose weight, there's your brain starts giving you messages that food is amazing. You, have, you know what I mean? Like all of a sudden this hot dog is like, bro, whatever. All this sugary food is just like, it magnetizes you. That's what your amygdala is doing. It's changing your perception of reality so that you will eat food. It is controlling you so that you will eat food. You can see this. You can see yourself uh, temporarily feeling great. Or at least, at least, not feeling great, but, you know, if you're dying, there's anxiety about death. There's a lot of anxiety right before a binge. There's tons. It's like, oh my God, I'm dying. It's, it, think about it. Your brain is like, oh my God, I'm dying. I need food. That's what's happening. And then you get food and it's like, whew, it's a rush. And it's not a, it's not happy. Don't, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of distress here. But your brain is being fed. Your brain is staying alive. And some deep part of you feels safe. Some deep part of you feels this is keeping me alive. And it repeats the cycle again and again and again and again and again. And it becomes automatic. And then when we have an automatic habit, it looks like an addiction. It appears like an addiction, although it's really just a strongly ingrained habit. So there you have it. There's a form down below where you can leave questions on videos and articles that I have done before. So leave any remaining questions you have. Use that form down below. Make sure you give me the URL of what you're talking about. I will try to answer that in a, in a updated version of this post or um, anything else like that. Okay. Namaste. Have a good day. Peace.